Good morning, can you hear me okay? Thank you, Zavi, for, um, for the invitation to present today. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to join uh, um, all the women this morning in uh, talking about creativity, and um, it's very inspiring to be here, and that, that film was a, was a great, uh, inspiring uh, story um, about how people can overcome, uh, overcome difficulties and, and um, obstacles. And our, the story that I'm going to tell you today is also about um, inspiration uh, and motivation to, um, to tackle a huge global, uh, global challenge. Um, and I'm going to, I was asked to, to give a personal, um, personal angle. So I went all the way with that. And I'm going to share with you my, my family story. Um, this is the family that uh, I grew up in, not, not my current family. I have a husband and three children, but this is the family that I was raised in. Um, this is my mom. She's a neuroscientist. I was um, born in Israel, and uh, we moved to the States uh, when I was eight. I was raised in Boston. Um, my mom's a neuroscientist, and she's, um, she does brain research uh, to this day. She's been doing it for the last 40 years. My dad is a uh, high-tech entrepreneur. He's an engineer by training. And my brother is also an engineer by training. His name is Danny. So you'll, I'm telling you all this because it's, it'll be important for the rest of the story so you know where I'm coming from and why I'm, why I'm here in this role. Um, had a very happy and normal childhood. Actually, was probably more than normal because we had so much more than so many other people. I think have. Um, we always had everything we needed. You know, great education, great after school activities, lots of friends, health, everything you, you need for a happy, happy childhood. Um, and uh, we're only a year and a half apart, Danny and I, so uh, obviously we were very close. And um, as you can imagine, also with, with a mom who's a neuroscientist and a dad who's an engineer, I um, from a very young age was exposed a lot to, to brain, to brain research, to technology, uh, and also working at Pfizer and at Teva and in the pharmaceutical industry for many years, exposed obviously to, uh, to brain disorders and to central nervous system uh, disease. And, um, but it wasn't until um, 17 years ago um, when my brother was 23 and he was actually serving in the army here in Israel. Um, he was diagnosed with um, a very serious brain condition called schizoaffective disorder. And um, it wasn't until that moment when he was hospitalized and suffering from a horrible psychotic episode um, that I personally became aware of the suffering and the pain and the helplessness and the devastation that is caused by brain illness, um, which oftentimes is a chronic condition and oftentimes is from a very early stage in life. Um, and that was really the first time that I realized how, you know, how helpless such a huge community is because there's just no cure. There's no cure, there's no solution for so many of the diseases that um, people suffer from. And that was um, kind of my first exposure and first time that I really became aware. Um, fast forward a little bit, um, but really, it's really, my story is just one of, of, of many, right? Um, you probably all know at least one person who maybe is a family member, is a friend, is a colleague um, who has been uh, impacted by one of over 500 brain disorders. Over one billion people worldwide suffer from some sort of neurological or psychiatric condition whether it's an illness that starts early in life uh, or a condition that we're born with, whether it's autism, whether it's a brain injury from sports, whether it's post-traumatic stress disorder that many soldiers come back with. Maybe it's um, other diseases that come on during um, early adulthood like depression, anorexia, schizophrenia, uh, and later in life, Parkinson's, stroke, Alzheimer's. You've heard about them all. Um, they're not only a global health issue, but they have become an economic and a social issue that many societies and governments are really starting to 
grapple with and starting to realize that th this is a major crisis because it's costing them trillions of dollars in medical costs, in lost productivity. Many people who suffer from these illnesses obviously um, cannot work. Uh, and not only that, their caregivers are pretty much um, unable to lead normal lives and it's a huge, huge burden for many families throughout the world. But there is some good news, I think, or at least some hope, and this is why I'm here. The world is starting to pay attention and the world is starting to do something about it. Starting to realize that, that we, we need to address this, this global crisis. And you probably have heard about uh, some major initiatives that have been launched over the last couple of years. The Billion Dollar Human Brain Project um, in the European Union, the uh, Obama Brain Initiative in the United States. So governments are starting to dedicate very large funds to advancing brain research, to mapping the brain, to modeling the brain, to understand better how it works. Four years ago, I moved back to Israel with my family, with my husband, my three kids, and I was looking for, um, for something new to do. I had been working as a finance professional in the pharma industry for many years and was looking for, um, for a new project, something that would be um, challenging and, and, and inspiring. And I happened to hear um, a very, very inspiring announcement uh, by a young guy. <clears throat> he's only 92 years old. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's 92, but his, his brain is much, much, much younger, and, and, and um, he's really been doing amazing things as, as president over the last seven years. Unfortunately, he's uh, towards the end of his presidency. I heard, an, uh, I heard him make an announcement at the annual Biomed conference, and he announced that Israel would be um, launching an initiative to advance brain research and technology, leveraging Israel's strength, a startup nation, a country that knows how to um, not only do conduct amazing research in neuroscience, as you may know, we have um, brain, multidisciplinary brain research centers at all of Israel's uh, academic institutions. And, but leveraging the, 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 the abil Israel's unique ability to bring solutions, to problem solve, to not only do basic and applied research, but to actually develop products and solutions and technologies that can get to patients. And Paris's vision was to focus on brain because Israel has all the unique combination of strengths to advance brain technologies. And he decided that Israel would, um, would accelerate the and promote the local neuro ecosystem in order to become a global leader and to join some of these other great countries in trying to solve um, the challenges of brain disorders worldwide. And he really sees the brain as the fourth revolution. As you see in the quote here where we've had the agriculture industrial information revolutions, he calls it now that we're into the brain revolution. And when I heard that announcement, I knew that that was, that was what I wanted to do. You know, I felt like it was, you know, sort of, it was in my genetics. My mom's a neuroscientist, my dad's a high-tech entrepreneur. I've got a brother who's, who's suffering from a brain disorder. I've worked in this field my whole life. You know, maybe this is where the passion can be directed, where the inspiration can be directed. And um, I contacted uh, Rafi Gidron, who's a serial entrepreneur who was uh, basically uh, given this project by Paris to, to lead it, and he's the chairman of the organization. And together we founded Israel Brain Technologies. And Israel Brain Technologies, is a nonprofit organization that was uh, founded a couple of two years ago. And our mission is to accelerate Israel's neurotechnology cluster. And basically, we're the leading national initiative to try to promote brain research, brain technology industry, R and D collab international R and D collaboration. And we do we do um, this work through a variety of programs that help to push forward the brain ecosystem in Israel. And we do it with a very international scope. So while we're focusing on promoting this in Israel, we do it through a very international process and a very international outreach. 
Uh, actually, at the end of uh, 2013, we were um, recognized as one of Israel's top tech successes um, in 2013, which was a great honor. We were listed on there with Waze and some other big projects, so it's a huge, uh, huge honor. Um, I don't want to get too much into our programs because I really wanted to, you know, speak more at the high level of sort of the story and the inspiration and, and the goal. Um, and I'd love to, you know, later on speak with anyone about, uh, you know, further, in further detail about, about what we do. But effectively, what we're trying to do is identify where we can help, where we can push forward brain research and technology development, and where we can accelerate the process so that ultimately more and more drugs, devices, diagnostics, more solutions get into the hands of patients faster. And we believe that Israel can be at the forefront of bringing more solutions to brain disorders in the world. And we do it by, um, by being a, a portal, a convener, an evangelist, and a catalyst. And that, those are the four functions that I, um, that I use, that I call on um, to really advance this process. When I talk about portal, we're, we're the knowledge center. We're the knowledge hub. Actually, a lot of the words that Maya mentioned really um, really connect for me too because we also serve as a hub and we serve as a lab. We're a hub in the sense that we, we really are the gateway um, for anyone who's interested in partnering with Israel in the field of neuroscience and neurotechnology. So we meet with a lot of delegations and we meet with investors and we meet with our institutes and R&D partners and anyone who's interested in learning about what's happening. We have a database of all the researchers and all the companies in Israel and we stay in touch with all the startups and new projects in order to be able to facilitate partnerships. We're a convener. We have a conference that we run every, uh, every year. We had our first conference uh, in October. We had um, leading um, uh, scientists, technologists, government officials, investors, any, all the stakeholders related to brain technology came to Israel and from Israel um, to find new ways to, to collaborate. We um, do a lot of lobbying and advocacy and outreach um, government, trying to get more funding from government. Uh, we're working on legislation right now with the U.S. to get joint funding for U.S.-Israel uh, neuroscience R&D. And a host of other programs, including being um, an accelerator for new projects. We hold workshops to actually get new startups off the ground and mentor them along the way and help them to find funding. So all this, obviously, with the, with the purpose that I mentioned, to accelerate the process. I'm happy to uh, you know, continue uh, speaking with you about it later on. I, I invite you to join uh, our conversation online. We have social media uh, communities. We have a, you know, um, a website, obviously, with a lot of information. And um, thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to speak to you today.